So talking about Disney has always proved difficult for me. I've got more than a few qualms about their business practices and their desire for an unobtainable, perpetual growth. As a company, it's an insatiable beast that consumes all that lies before it. But I also can't pretend that it hasn't been the progenitor of so much of the media and creative works that I personally hold pretty dear. I'm only human. Despite the unnecessary wealth they've obtained and how cynically I view that, the second I step into one of their theme parks or something like that, I have forgotten all about that. I get swept up in the magic. I'm weak. So in order to keep my videos clearer on a message, I think I'm going to separate out that more cynical view into more focused videos that are centered on that specifically. This video is about the art, the magic, the fun. We aren't talking about copyright. We aren't talking about excessive acquisitions. We're just here to kick back and enjoy the show. Um, what's a better place to start than the beginning? Well, not exactly the beginning, but the start of the Disney animated canon. Branching from shorts, commercials, things like that, uh, the Golden Age began in 1937 with Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, and it ends in 1942 with Bambi. Uh, these, largely these movies were financial flops despite their critical success, and their lack of commercial profits almost actually led to the fall of the company. It's sometimes referred to as the tar and sugar era. Because while it had these sickly sweet, adorable, cutesy, vibrant visuals, they would quickly be transitioned into darker, and at times macabre, visuals. I'm not going to go in chronological order here, but more in a how much I enjoyed these movies. I'm gonna start with the worst and go up from there. I say worst, but I don't think these movies are bad or anything, you know what I mean. I like to start at my least favorite, and I, I want to get more upbeat as I go along. Um, largely my relationship with these moves is sort of, eh, I never got around to watching these. Maybe I should. <sighs> yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Let's watch them. Other than Bambi, I have no nostalgia attached to these movies. Speaking of Bambi... Now, Walt Disney Home Video is proud to announce that in 1997, one of the most treasured animated classics ever is finally being released on video for a whole new generation to enjoy. Bambi. Watch what I can do! Fully restored in a special collector's edition, it's the magic that touches everyone's heart, the adventure that captures everyone's imagination, and the masterpiece that's a must for everyone's collection. For a limited time, you can give your children memories they'll have forever. <laughs> the special collector's edition of Walt Disney's timeless classic, Bambi. Enjoy it again for the very first time. Coming to video spring 1997. So this is the first I have on my list. I was not crazy about Bambi. It's not offering a lot to me. It's a more nebulous, free-flowing story with the amorphous, vaguely defined villain of man, which is fine. That's fine. Um, just a quick aside, just a quick little tangent. I want to take this time to mention why you should not just trust Wikipedia. If you are making content, if you are writing a paper, if you are in any way presenting your ideas to others, maybe don't trust Wikipedia at face value. Uh, the fan wiki purports that Bambi was the catalyst for environmental films, which I, I don't know about that. It just doesn't sound right to me. There were films about the environment before this movie, and the films following this tend to trend with the knowledge at the time. As awareness about certain environmental changes spread, media around it also spreads. If we're really into recycling, guess what? There's going to be a lot of cartoon specials and a lot of movies centered around the human's carbon footprint, or recycling, or things like that. I, don't, I just don't think the fan wiki should be sucking off Disney so much. Definitely don't trust the fan wiki. It's very starry-eyed about the movie. And if you really think that Bambi is the genesis of such discussion, uh, then maybe credit might be due to the original book, Bambi, A Life in the Woods, from which the film was very closely adapted. Also, the regular just Wikipedia page describes Bambi as a mule deer, and I'm pretty sure he's a white-tailed deer. Mule deer have a white tail that's tipped black, and white-tailed deer have a tail that's brown along the top and white along the underside. 
I mean, that's not super important, but if little bits and pieces of information like that can get messed up, you might want to look further with your information. That aside, let's just talk about Bambi. Um, Bambi was initially meant to be the second feature-length film for Disney, but ended up being the last for several reasons. Partly, they had trouble adapting a story that was initially meant for an adult audience into an experience palatable to children. Go find a summary for the original book. There's a lot of death and a lot of gun violence. Um, there were financial issues and just production issues that really delayed the release of this movie. But in terms of my personal enjoyment, I just think it's the most boring of the bunch. Like, don't get me wrong. It's beautiful, it looks nice, but the story is really lackluster. The emotional gut punch hits hard, but past that point, it's not offering me much. Uh, when it comes to animation, looks really good, but I'm gonna say one thing that I did notice while watching it is there's an odd juxtaposition between the naturalistic movement of Bambi and then like cartoonish movements of characters like the owl. It just looks very odd next to each other. Or I guess it more looks odd when they're cut back to back. When you only see one at a time, I don't think it's all that noticeable, but back to back, I couldn't help but see it. I say, Watching this movie is very analogous to like a walk in the woods, taking in whatever you come across. It's a relaxing experience, but it's not really building into anything else. It's just something that impacts you in the moment. You see something on the way. If that's your thing, go for it, buddy. Do you know what happens when these eyes meet these? And these? Love at first sight. Here at last, Walt Disney's Bambi. This is quite an occasion. With characters loved by generations. Golfers. One of the greatest movies of all time. The masterpiece everyone will watch with wonder can finally be yours to treasure forever. On video cassette, it's Bambi. Only $26.99. Fucking what? $26.99 for Bambi? Hold up. It was, it was $19.89. And that was $26.99. God, holy. Oh my God. 56, well, 55, almost $56 for the privilege of owning Bambi, the most thrilling, exciting adventure of all time. Damn. Walt Disney Pictures presents The Magic of Fantasia. It's the 50th anniversary of this all-time animated masterpiece, now fully restored to its original brilliance. Walt Disney's classic Fantasia, rated G. Special limited engagement starts Friday. I feel like every artsy-fartsy YouTuber has to put Fantasia pretty high on a list like this, but I just can't do it. Like, yeah, it's a spectacle. It pioneered essentially surround sound. It did all these wonderful things, but like... I need some substance for my spectacle, please. It's two hours long. I'm pretty sure it's the longest Disney movie, and despite its length, it's not giving me much to work with. I think it's the only film out of this selection that wasn't a critical darling upon release. Some felt it was too haughty and self-important. But um, as of today, it's got a 94% on Rotten Tomatoes, so I think it's gotten over that stigma. Think of this movie what you want, but I got ADHD. Sometimes I want more to look at than pretty visuals. It's less a movie that I want to return to again and again, but I would describe it as an experience. I'm glad that I watched it, but I don't feel compelled to urge others to do the same. Sorry if this is your favorite out of the bunch, but eh. See Dumbo's magnificent fall to fame, the most sensational climax ever filmed. Whee! So, I like Dumbo. I mean, yeah, I like the movie just fine. But if you sat me down without letting me think about it and just asked me what I liked about it, I'd just have to shrug. It's just a fine movie. I don't think it stands out as spectacular, but it's also an enjoyable experience throughout its runtime. It's a very cute and fun movie. Uh, 
I mean, when you look at the animation quality in comparison to the others, it's clear that money was running thin, but it's still enjoyable. Uh, I think it's got the most hokey, kid-friendly message. It's like an Aesop's fable kind of moral. Other movies in the golden age have a more nebulous enemy or an enemy that's just unambiguously evil. But this is just more of a after-school special kind of moral. Don't bully others. Out of the five films we have here, I, this one by far has the most emotion and character. I know what Dumbo, the character, not the movie, is about in a way that doesn't apply to the other protagonist. He's got personality. It's endeared me to him and to the other characters within this picture. Picture? What am I, 50? Who calls a movie a picture? I, I, I've gotten too high and mighty for my own boots. Um, at 64 minutes, it's the shortest film of the golden age, and it's all we needed. It might actually be the shortest movie in the Disney animated canon as a whole. I'd have to double check it, but I can't think of any movie that's shorter. I think Bambi's like 80, 70 or 80 minutes, stuff like that. What's well, another pretty short movie? It, it's not important. This one is short, and I think that helps it. I can't imagine what a few extra minutes is going to add to such a simplistic story. Now, we could talk about The Crow. You know, originally named Jim Crow, voiced by a white man, but that's a whole nother monster. And I think that warrants a deeper discussion than this video might suggest. Or that this video has space for. So yeah. We gotta save her! Whether it's your first time or your 50th, now is the time to experience the magic much of the most beloved animated motion picture of all time. A true story. A love story. Where we will live happily ever after. Walt Disney's classic, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Opening July 17th in 42 countries worldwide. You know the spiel for the Snow White. It was the first of the Golden Age, dubbed Disney's folly due to its high production cost and time, all that stuff. It, 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 it started what became the monster that we know today. I like it. It's fine. Frankly, this movie just feels wholesome. I mean, you know, other than an evil witch looking to poison young women, it feels like the experience of reading through a fairy tale. It's, one, it's another film that I don't really have a ton to say about. Just like with Fantasia, I didn't have a lot to say about it. I like it, it's, it's whatever. Some of the visuals seem a little odd, but for the most part, it's beautiful. I like the characters just fine, I just don't really know anything about their internal motivations, aside from surface level desires, like wanting beauty or true love. These are very generic. But like, I also don't need every one of my movies that I watch to have this sort of complex world and character building. And in the context of a movie like this, it's just going to complicate the execution. It's a fairy tale. I don't really need to know how she grew up. I don't need anything like that. Oh, and uh, the only thing I have really to note is the warbly singing is just, <laughs> it makes me laugh in its dated nature and it's kind of goofy at this point. I'm wishing, I'm wishing for the one I don't have any criticisms to say about the singing. I just think it's amusing. From Walt Disney Home Video, sound the trumpets. Something very special is here. Pinocchio! Walt Disney's merriest musical masterpiece. Pinocchio! Now you can buy Pinocchio on video cassette for the last time this century. Pinocchio. Now this is one of the only ones that I watch casually and not as history, if that makes sense. When I watch the other four movies, I've got this running thought in my head that this is what led to where we are today. It's flawed, but it was a stepping stone. This pioneered some of the first uses of X, Y, or Z technique. Oh, this was monumental to the history of animation. But like, for this movie, I just like it as a movie. It's got spectacle, it's got story, it's got characters, action, all that stuff. And it's like, it's got the best of both worlds. Where some of these movies had more in the visual department and others had more in the story, this looks as good as the best of the golden age, 
but it also has a substantial story to carry interest throughout its runtime. Putting this film at the top of my list was the easiest decision out of all of the placements. Sometimes my feelings about the others shift from time to time, they adjust, but this film, it's always my favorite out of the golden age. Uh, the only thing I found interesting when looking up some of the history and whatnot of Pinocchio, I mean, it's not the only thing I found interesting, but I felt like the only thing that warranted me bringing up was that Pinocchio was initially written in a more serialized format. And knowing that now, it's pretty evident in the segmented format of the movie. Now, it doesn't feel disjointed, but you can see hallmarks of its origin. You can see parts where you're like, I could see this being a, in a serialized format. So those are my quick short thoughts, ranked and reviewed, if you wanna say that, of the Disney Golden Age. I'm gonna go through each of the ages for the Disney animated canon. I'm gonna talk about the live action films, the directed DVD sequels, and then the Disney television series, the films that were associated with those. Those are all gonna be separate videos where I'm going to consume large quantities of media at once and then talk about that experience as a whole. So if you're interested in that, stick around.